He's harmless. Let him go. The last creature left alive here. Table's late for dinner. Food still on the plates. Hey, no one to eat it now. Oh, that pretty, pretty woman. I suppose the child too. I heard there was a child. Though no one ever saw her. What do we do now? Check that the bodies have been taken away. Lock up. But there's not much we can do. Look around, sir. I suppose we ought. Barney! Hmm? There's a child here. Oh, Mercy, who is she? I'm Mary Lennox. I've called and called, but nobody has come. It's the child no one ever saw. She's actually been forgotten. Why was I forgotten? Why does nobody come? Poor little kid. There is nobody left to come. But where is my ayah? I think we'd better take her to the English clergyman and his wife. Then someone will have to decide what's to become of her. Mary? Mary, you can he stay here alone? We'll take you to some very nice people who have children of their own. Now, don't be frightened. I'm not in the least frightened. The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett Dramatised in five episodes by Judy Allen Episode 1 Now there's stones for a path, and there's scarlet hibiscus blossoms for the flower bed. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm making a garden. You're not allowed to. You don't belong here. Go away. My mother doesn't want you here. She doesn't like you. Then I don't like her. You haven't got a mother. She's dead. Everyone in your house is dead. Leave me alone. Why don't you put a heap of stones there and pretend it's a rockery? There, in the middle. Go away! I don't want boys! Go away! You're going to be sent home at the end of the week. And we're glad. And I'm glad too. Where is home? She doesn't know where home is. It's England, of course. You are going to your uncle, Mr Archibald Craven. I don't know a thing about him. Mr Craven lives in a great big old house in the country. He's a monster and everybody's frightened of him. I don't believe you. Mistress Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells and marigolds all in a row. It is good of you to let Mary travel with you. I hope she won't be a trouble to you. I'm sure she won't. It's too long a voyage for a child to take unaccompanied. She's such a plain child, and her mother was such a pretty creature. It's very sad now that poor beautiful soul is gone to remember that many people never knew she had a child at all. Where am I to take her when we reach England? Mr Craven is sending his housekeeper, a Mrs Medlock, to meet her off the boat. Mrs Medlock? I believe the child will be glad to get away from my brood. It will be her first time in England, I imagine. Yes. I wonder what they'll make of her.
Well, Mrs. Medlock, I have brought you Mary Lennox. She's the child sitting on her luggage over there, waiting. And we'd heard her mother was a beauty. She hasn't handed much of it down, has she, ma'am? Perhaps she will improve as she grows older. Children alter so much. She'll have to alter a good deal. And there's nothing likely to improve a child at Mithelthwaite Manor, if you ask me. She has been through a tragedy. You know, I expect, about the cholera. We heard her mother died of it. Mm. Her father, too. And her ayah, and most of the other servants. Oh, it was a terrible business. That's why Mr Craven said he would take the child. Not that he's likely to trouble much about her. He never troubles about no one. She can be a difficult child. But then she has had a difficult time staying with the clergyman's family. I don't stand no nonsense from young ones. Come along now, Miss Mary. We have a long journey to take. All the way to Yorkshire. Have you never met your uncle? No. Never heard your father and mother talk about him? No. Well, he lives in Mistlethwaite Manor on the edge of the moors in Yorkshire. And that's where you'll live from now on. Are you paying attention? Yes. The house is 600 years old. It's a grand big place in its gloomy way. I know nothing about such places. Hey, but you're like a little old woman. Don't you care? Doesn't matter whether I care or not. Well, you're right enough, it doesn't. You not expect to see your uncle because ten to one you won't. Very well. Most of the time he's away, and when he's home he talks to nobody. He's got no pleasure from all his money and that big place. Till he married. Married? Have I an aunt there? She was your father's sister. A sweet, pretty thing she was. After the tragedy, he was near mad with grief. What tragedy? She died, that's what. Since that day, he's had no interest in anything or anybody. So you needn't expect to have a fuss made of you. No, I won't. going now? We must drive across the moor to the manor. What is a moor? If you want to know what a moor is, look out of the window. It's hard to see in the dark. It's not the sea, is it? No, not it. It's just miles and miles of wild land. It sounds like the sea. That's just the wind blowing through the bushes. I don't think I like it. It's a wild, dreary place, to my mind. Though there's plenty that do like it. I don't like it. See that bit of light twinkling over there? I think so. That's the light in the lodge by the gates. We shall be at the house in a bit. Good evening, Mr Pitcher. I'll have her trunk brought in presently. You are to take her to her room. He doesn't want to see her. He's going to London in the morning. As long as I know what's expected of what's me... What's expected of you, Mrs Medlock, is that you make sure he's not disturbed and doesn't see what he doesn't want to see. Come along, Mary Lennox. There's hundreds of rooms in this house and there's two staircases and more corridors than you'll ever have seen before. What is in all those rooms? They're nothing to do with you. You'll see the gardens tomorrow. But when you're in the house, don't go wandering and poking about. Mr Craven won't have it. I shall not want to go poking about. Now, this room and the next are where you'll live. See, the fire's been lighted and your supper's on the table. I'm not hungry. Nonsense. Now you must keep to these two rooms. Except if you're going right outside into the garden. Don't you forget that. 
very well. all that? Oh, up there, out the window? Yes. That's the moor. Does I like it? No, I hate it. <laughs> That's because there's not used to it. I think it's too big and bare now, but I will like it. Do you? Aye, that I do. In spring and summer, when gorse and broom and heather's in flower, it smells of honey and there's such a lot of fresh air. I wouldn't live away from the moor for anything. You're a strange sort of servant. Eh, <laughs> I know that. If there was a grand missus at this house, I shouldn't have been even one of the owned housemaids. I'm, I'm too common and I talk too much Yorkshire. There's our washing water and towel. Are you going to be my servant? I'm to do the housemaid's work up here and wait on you a bit, but you won't need much waiting on. Who's going to dress me? Can I dress the sin? <laughs> what do you mean? I don't understand your language. Oh, I forgot. Mrs. Medlock told me I'd have to be careful. You wouldn't know what I was saying. I mean, can't you put on your own clothes? No, I never did in my life. My eye addressed me, of course. Well, it's time I should learn. My mother always said she couldn't see why grand people's children didn't turn out fair fools, what with nurses and being washed and dressed and took out to walk as if they were puppies. It was different in India. Hey, I can see it were different. I dare say it's because there's such a lot of blacks there. When I heard you was coming from India, I thought you was a black too. What? You thought I was a native? You you daughter of a pig? Hey, who are you calling names? That's not a way for a young lady to talk. You dared to think I was a native. They are not people, they're just servants who must salam to you. A black's a man and a brother, and I was fair pleased to think I was going to see one close. There you are, no more black than me, for all you see, Ella. You know nothing about India. You know nothing about anything. <laughs> hey, hey, you look kind of that. I didn't mean to make you vexed. I don't know anything about anything, just like you said. I beg your pardon, miss. Well, do stop crying. It's time for the breakfast. I'll help thee with the clothes if thou likes. Good. All my sisters and brothers look after themselves. It's only the baby as gets his clothes put on for him. I have no brothers or sisters. Eh... Hey. You should see us all. There's twelve of us. And me father only gets sixteen shilling a week. I can tell you, mother's put to it to get porridge for them all. Mother says she thinks they eat the grass, same as the wild ponies do. Our dick, and he's twelve years old, and he's got a young pony he calls his own. Where did he get it? He found it out on the moor with its mother when it was a little one. And he began to make friends with it, and it got to like him, so it follows him about, and it lets him get on his back. <laughs> now then... The breakfast on the table in the next room. I don't want that. That doesn't want that porridge. No. Put a bit of treacle on it or a bit of sugar. I don't want it. If our children was at this table, they'd clean it bare in five minutes. They scarce ever had their stomachs full in their lives. They're as hungry as young hawks and foxes. I don't know what it is to be hungry. Well, it would do thee good to try it. I've no patience with folks as sits and just stares at good bread and meat. Don't I just wish Dickon and the rest of them could have what's here? Why don't you take it to them? It's not mine. And this isn't my day out. I get my day out once a month, same as the rest. Then I go home and clean up for Mother and give her a day's rest. Hey, that must miss that, Mother. I used to see her sometimes. She was very pretty. She wore lovely clothes. Full of lace. Hmm... Can I not eat anything? I'll drink some tea, and I might have a little toast. Then you wrap up warm and run out and play. It'll do you good and give you some stomach for your meat. Out? You mean out on the moor? No, in the grounds. You'll not have seen much arriving in the dark like you did, but there's parkland all round this house, and a wood, and gardens are plenty. But why should I go out on a day like this? Well, if I doesn't go out, I'll have to stay in. And what has that got to do inside? All right. I will go out. Who will go with me? You'll go by yourself. You'll have to learn to play like other children does when they haven't got sisters and brothers. 
Our oh, Dickon goes off on the moor by himself and plays for hours. He's got sheep on the moor that know him, and birds as comes and eats out of his hand. However little there is to eat, he always saves a bit of his bread to coax his pets. I suppose I can go and look at the birds. They'll be different from the birds in India. There we are. Space enough here. Where am I to go? If that goes round that way, I'll come to the gardens. There's lots of flowers in summertime, but there's nothing blooming now. Very well. Oh, and one of the gardens is locked up. They'll not be able to go in there. Why? Mr Craven had it shut when his wife died so sudden. It was her garden. Now he won't let no one go inside. How could a garden be shut up? Some of the gardens has walls round them with doors. Mr Craven locked the door to that one. He dug a hole and buried the key. They say even he has forgotten where he hid it. There's Mrs Medlock's bell ringing for me. I must run. Off you go. It's all so grey. Not like India. No bright blooms. I believe that is a fountain in that pool. There's no water coming out of it. It's all so bare and ugly. Now, here is a wall. Is this the closed garden? No, the gate is open. Gray, who are you? What is this place? One at Kitchen Gardens. And what's that through that other green door? That's another of them. And there's orchard to the side of that. Can I go in them? If thou likes. But there's naught to see. If Mr Craven liked his wife so much, why did he hate her garden? Why would he lock it and bury the key? I wonder if I shall ever see him. If I do, I won't like him. And he won't like me. People never like me. And I never like people. This is the orchard. There are lots of gardens here, and a lot of walls. But there's no green door in this wall down here. This must be the end of it all. No, it's not the end. I can see trees above the wall. Oh, and now I see you, Pat. You're up there at the top of the tree. Gone. I believe that tree was in the closed garden, and the bird was in there too. I feel sure it was. There is a wall around the place, and there is no door. I've been into the other gardens. There were nothing to prevent thee. I went to the orchard. There were no dog at the door to bite thee. There was no door into the other garden. What garden? The one on the other side of the wall. There were trees in there. I saw the tops of them. A bird with a red breast was sitting on one of them, and he sang. Yeah, well... Ah, here he is. Oh, yes, that's him. That is him, isn't it? Where has there been, the cheeky little beggar? What kind of bird is he? Doesn't that know? He's a robin redbreast. They're the friendliest, curiousest birds alive. Watch him pecking about there at that mole hill, searching for worms and looking round at us now and again. He knows we're talking about him. Will he always come when you call him? Aye, that he will. He gets lonely. I'm lonely. You the little wench from India? Yes. Yeah, no wonder that lonely. It'll be lonelier before there's done. What is your name? Ben Weatherstaff. I'm lonely myself, except when he's with me, pecking round for worms. His only friend I've got. I have no friends at all. I never had. My ayah didn't like me, and I never played with anyone. Ah, oh, that and me are a good bit alike. We was wove out at same cloth. We're neither on as good looking, and we're both of us as sour as we look, I'll warrant. Yeah, there he goes. 
Up to the treetop for a better view on us. What did he sing like that for? He's made up his mind to make friends with her. Dang me if he hadn't took a fancy to thee. To me? Oh, would you make friends with me? Would you? Yeah. Yeah, they said that is nice and human, as if there was a real child instead of a sharp old woman. They said it almost like Dickon talks to his wild things on Moor. Do you know Dickon? Oh, everybody knows him. Very blackberries and heather bells knows him. I'll warrant foxes shows him where the cubs lies. And the skylarks doesn't hide the nest from him. He's flown over the wall. He's flown into the orchard. I can still see him. Now he's flown across the other wall. He's flown into the garden where there is no door. Yeah, he lives there. He came out to egg there. If he's caught in, he's making up to some madam of a robin that lives among the old rose trees there. Rose trees? Are there rose trees? There was. Ten years ago. I should like to see them. Where's the green door? There must be a door somewhere. There was. Ten years ago. But there isn't now. None as anyone can find, and none as is anyone's business. Now, don't be a meddlesome wench and poke your nose in where it's no cause to go. Get your gun and play. They got on well enough with our porridge this morning, didn't they? Tastes nice today. It's the same you've had every day this past week or more. It's the air blowing off the moor that's given thee stomach for the victuals. I hate the wind. It blows in the garden every day. I have to run to keep warm. That's what's bringing colour to the face and making thee hungry. You go on playing out of doors every day and you'll get some flesh on your bones. You won't be so yellow. I don't play. I've nothing to play with. Nothing to play with? Our children plays with sticks and stones. They just runs about and shouts and looks at things. I don't shout. But I don't mind looking at things. Get thee out, then. I'd first stay in. I like to hear you talk about your mother and Dickon. I've talked to thee enough today. I've work to do. The first day in the garden, I met Ben Weatherstaff. But he's too busy to talk to me now. Usually he just walks away. Leave him be. He has enough to do. Go and run about by thyself. Ben Weatherstaff hasn't been busy on this path. He's left all these leaves growing right down the wall. Why doesn't he cut them neatly, like he has everywhere else? Oh, is it you, Robin? Where are you? I guess it is you. I like you. I like you. Oh, where are you going? That's your favourite treetop. I've seen you sitting up there before. The first time I saw you in that tree, I was in the orchard. But now, I'm on the other side of the orchard. And here's a wall. And inside the wall is that same tree. I'm going to run round the other side and make sure. Oh, Robin, do stay there so that I know if it's the same tree. It's in that garden. I'm sure it is. Down here, through the door. Yes, here is the orchard. Now the tree is on the other side of the orchard wall. It's in the garden no one can go into. It's in the garden without a door. I wish I could see what it was like. Ben Weatherstaff said there was no door, and there is no door. But there must have been one ten years ago. Because Mr. Craven buried the key. It's very strange. They've got on as well with their supper as they did with their breakfast this morning. Must you go? I'm supposed to take your tray to the kitchen. Stay and talk to me. Hey, I'd rather be here with thee than down in the servants' hall. It's dull down there, and I miss Dickon and all the other children. Martha? Mm hmm? Why did Mr. Craven hate the garden? Aren't thou thinking about that garden yet? 
That was just the way with me when I first heard about it. Why did he hate it? It's cosy by this fire. Listen to the wind wuthering round the house. You could best stand up up more if he was out on it tonight. But why did he hate it? Mrs Medlock said it's not to be talked about. There's lots of things in this place that's not to be talked of. That's Mr Craven's orders. But you know the story, don't you, Martha? Oh, I won't tell anyone you've talked about it. But for the garden, he wouldn't be like he is. It was Mrs Craven's garden that she had made when first they were married. She just loved it. Her and Mr Craven used to tend the flowers themselves. None of the gardeners was ever let to go in. Him and her used to go in and shut the door and stay there hours and hours, reading and talking. And there was an old tree with a branch bent like a seat. And she made roses grow over it. And she used to sit there. But one day, when she was sitting there, the branch broke and she fell on the ground. She was hurt so bad that next day she died. The doctors thought he'd go out of his mind and die too. That's why he hates it. No one's never gone in since and he won't let anyone talk about it. That's the saddest story I've ever heard. Martha, do you hear someone crying? No, it's the wind. Sometimes it sounds as if someone was lost on the moor and wailing. But listen, it's in the house, down one of those long corridors. Wind's got all sorts of sounds. Oh, what was that? <laughs> the draft gets in the passages. It blew the door open, that's all. There, I told you so. It was the wind. No, it was someone crying, and it wasn't a grown-up person. Then it was little Betty Butterworth, the scullery maid. She, she's got a toothache. I must go downstairs. Mrs Medlock will be wondering what's become of me. I know it is someone crying. I know it. <laughs> The Secret Garden, dramatised by Judy Allen from the novel by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Mary Lennox, Jessica Marshall Gardner. Mrs Medlock, Beryl Reed. Ben Weatherstaff, Robin Bailey. Martha Sowerby, Harriet Walter. Mrs Morrison, Maxine Audley. Barney, Stephen Garlick. Colonel McGrew, Fraser Carr. Pitcher, Brett Usher, Mrs. Crawford, Jane Whittenshaw, Basil, Patrick Rosenfeld. Music was by Elizabeth Parker, and The Secret Garden was directed by John Taylor. Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett, dramatised in five episodes by Judy Allen. After the death of her parents in India, Mary Lennox comes to stay in Misselthwaite Manor, where her only friends are Martha the servant and a robin in Ben Weatherstaff's garden. But Mary's certain there's someone else in the house, someone who can be heard at night crying strangely in one of the dark rooms along the corridor. Episode 2 There, Miss Mary, there's the fire lit for you. 
I can't see them all. It's all hidden by grey mist. There'll be no going out today. I haven't heard that crying again. I never did hear crying. I told thee it was the wind. You said it might be the scullery maid with toothache. Don't trouble thyself about it. Martha, what do you do in your cottage when it rains like this? Hey, the cottage does seem small then. It's as well Mother's a good-tempered woman. Your mother sounds very nice. Our Dick and he doesn't mind the wet. He sees things on rainy days as doesn't show when it's fair weather. He once found a fox cub half drowned in its hole. He brought it home in his shirt to keep it warm. It's with him still. Does it sit by your fire? <laughs> Sometimes. He found a half-drowned young crow another time and he brought it home too and tamed it. It's named Soot because it's so black. If I had a crow or a fox cub, I could play with it. But I have nothing. Can they knit? No. Can they sew? No. Can they read? Yes. Well then, why doesn't they read something? I haven't any books. They were left in India. If only Mrs. Medlock had let me into the library, there's thousands of books there. Where are you going? I have to do the rest of my work now. Don't fret. It'll not rain forever. I will go and find the library myself. Mrs. Medlock said there were a hundred rooms with closed doors. Can there be a hundred, really? Even if I can't find the library, I can see how many doors I can count. I may get lost. I don't mind. How many doors so far? I forgot to count. This one isn't locked. Just a room with pictures. Oh, and little ivory elephants. Perhaps they came from India. It must have been a lady's sitting room. Oh, it is all so quiet and so dusty. What was that? There's something in the cushion. Oh, Mouse, you've made a nest and you have babies. Don't worry, your secret place is safe. I'll go away. These are not the stairs I came up. I think I may be lost. I don't think I've been in this corridor before. How still everything is. Well, it's nearer than it was last night. And it is someone crying. What are you doing here? What did I tell you about not poking about? I turned round the wrong corner. I didn't know which way to go and I heard someone crying. You didn't hear anything of the sort. The master had better get you a governess. I've got enough to do. Now you stay where you're told to stay or you'll find yourself locked up. There was someone crying. There was. And I will find out. Look at the moor! Aye, the storm's over for a bit. Now, I've got my breakfast into the room all ready. It's my day out and I'm going home. Hey, I'll be glad to see Mother. I like your mother. I should think I did. Now, here's that water to wash in. I've never seen her, though. Well, she's that sensible and good-natured that no-one could help liking her, whether they'd seen her or not. I like Dickon. And I've never seen him. I've told thee the very birds like him. 
I wonder what Dickon would think of thee. He wouldn't like me. Nobody does. Hmm. How does the like herself? Not at all, really. But I've never thought of that. <laughs> Mother said that to me once when I was in a bad temper. It made me laugh and it brought me to my senses. <laughs> I'll, I'll be lonely when you've gone. Now nah, then. I can get herself dressed and out the door, I suppose. There's not the baby there was when they arrived. I'm away now. Don't weather stuff. Are you busy? Springtime's coming. Can I smell it? Why well, smell something nice and fresh and damp? Yeah, that's the earth in a good humour, making ready to grow things. It doesn't look as though it's doing anything. It flower gardens out there, things will be stirring down below at dark. You'll see bits of green spikes sticking out at the black earth after a bit. They'll push up a little bit this day, a little more the next. You watch him. I'm going to. Oh, here's the robin. Do you think he remembers me? Remembers, eh? He's never seen the little wench here before. He's bent on finding out all about thee. Are things stirring down below in the dark in that garden where he lives? What garden? The one where you said the old rose trees are. Yeah. Is it all dead? All flowers grow up there in the summer? Ask him. He's the only one as knows. There, he's off. He's seen enough of you for one day. And so have I. I'm not to ask about the shut-up garden. I'm not to look in rooms. And I'm not to ask about the crying. I like that garden, even though I've never seen it. And I like Dickon and Martha's mother, though I've never seen them either. And I like Martha. And I like the robin. That seems a good many people to like. Oh, Robin, I think you're following me. Are you looking for worms? Would you like me to kick the earth away a bit for you? Or oh, there is something here. But it isn't anything for you to eat. It's just a rusty iron ring. Wait, it's attached to something. It's an old key. Perhaps it's been buried for ten years. Perhaps it's the key to the garden. What use is a key without a door? Martha, you're back. Mrs. Medlock had to get me up this morning. She let me sleep over at home. What did you do at your cottage? Mother and I got all the washing and cleaning out of the way, and there was a good fire and a smell of baking. And Dickon, he said our cottage was good enough for a king to live in. <laughs> then in the evening, Mother and I did the mending. And I told them about you. They wanted to hear all about India and all about the ship you came in. I couldn't tell them enough. Would they like to hear about riding on elephants and camels? <laughs> My word, I should think they would. <laughs> and about officers going to hunt tigers. It would send them clean off their heads. <laughs> did Dickon and your mother really like to hear about me? Why, our Dickens eyes nearly started out of his head. <laughs> but my mother, she says, Now, Martha, you just think how you'd feel in a big place like that, wandering about alone and no mother. You do your best to cheer her up, she says. And I said I would. You do cheer me up. I like to hear you talk. And what does the think? I've brought thee a present. A present? A man was driving across the moor, peddling odds and ends. And Mother, she says to me, Martha, thou's brought thy wages like a good lass, and I've got four places to put every penny, but I'm just going to take twopence out of it to buy that child a skipping rope. <sighs> and here it is. <laughs> I've had it hidden in the pocket of my apron. <laughs> oh, your mother's very kind. <laughs> but what's it for? What's it for? Does that mean they've not got skipping ropes in India for all they've got elephants and tigers? <laughs> Just watch me. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I've skipped as much as 500. 
when I was 12. <laughs> but I wasn't as fat then as I am now. And I was in practice. Oh, do you think I could ever skip like that? Yeah, you just try it. Come out of the way of that flower pot, though. That's it. Come on, you got to turn the roll. That's it. <laughs> I'm not very clever at it. If you practice, you'll get better. <laughs> oh, I do like it. Put on that things and run and skip out of doors. That's what Mother said for you to do. Oh, Martha, they were your wages. It was your tuppence, really. Thank you. Oh, does I want to shake me hand? <laughs> there, then. <laughs> now, what a queer old womanish thing. If that'd been our Elizabeth Ellen, that'd have given me a kiss. Do you want me to give you a kiss? Nay, not me. If that was different, perhaps I'd want it myself, but that isn't. Run outside and play with the rope. <laughs> Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Well, upon my word, that skipped red right into the cheeks. I've never skipped before. I wouldn't have believed I could do it at all. I can only go up to twenty. Just see out Robin Redbreast watching me. He's never seen a skipping rope before. He followed after the yesterday. He'll be at it again today. He'll be bound to find out what skipping rope is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello, Robin. You did follow me. You showed me where the key was yesterday. It's still in my pocket. I can feel it every time I skip. You ought to show me the door today. But I don't believe you know where it is. Oh, don't fly away. Have I vexed you? I see, I see. This is the wall with no door in it. This is the wall of the closed garden. All this green stuff. It isn't growing on the wall at all. It's hanging down in front of it like a curtain. There's something under here. It's a doorknob. And there's a door under here with a keyhole in it. Oh, I think the key fits. But I can't turn it. It's too stiff. Perhaps it isn't the right key. Oh, yes, it does turn. I found it. This is the closed garden. How still it is. How still. I'm the first person who has spoken in here for ten years. How can it be so beautiful when everything in it has died? All the brown dead roses. They climbed everywhere before they died. They tangled into arches. Thank you for bringing me here. This is the most mysterious place I ever saw. Is it all quite dead? I wish it wasn't. No. Here are some of those little green points like the ones Ben showed me. Yes, they are growing things. They can't breathe with all this dead grass over them. There. Oh, if only the roses weren't all dead. There would be thousands of them, all over the walls and on the bushes and trailing from the trees. I'm going to go all over the garden and clear as much as I can of those things that are alive. Two helps a dinner, eh? Mother will be pleased when I tell her what the skipping rope's done for thee. Martha, today I found some white roots that look like onions. What are they? They're bulbs. The little ones are snowdrops and crocuses. The big ones are narcissus and daffy-down-dillies. 
The biggest of all is lilies and purple flags. Dickon's got a whole lot planted in our bit of garden. Does Dickon know all about them? Our Dickon can make a flower grow out of a brick wall. Mother says he just whispers things out of the ground. Martha, I wish I had a little spade. Aren't they going to take to digging now? This is such a big, lonely place. I thought if I had a spade, I could make a little garden somewhere. There now. Mother said they should give you a bit of garden for yourself. Your mother understands a lot of things, doesn't she? Yeah, it's like she says. A woman as brings up twelve children learns something besides her ABC. Martha, how much would a little spade cost? Well, at Thwaite Village, I saw a little garden set with a spade and a rake and a fork for two shilling. I've got more than that in my purse. Mrs Medlock gave me some money from Mr Craven. A shilling every Saturday. That's riches! The rent on our cottage is only one and threepence and it's like pulling eye teeth to get it. Now, I've just thought of something. What? Does thou know how to print letters? I know how to write. No, our Dickon can only read printing. If that could print, we could write a letter to him and ask him to go and buy garden tools and he could buy some packs of flower seeds at the same time. Oh, Martha, you are nice. We can put the money in the envelope and I'll get the butcher's boy to take it in his cart. He's a great friend of Dickens. But how shall I get the things when Dickens bought them? He'll bring them to you himself. I never thought I should see Dickon. Does thou want to see him? Yes, I do. I never saw a boy foxes and crows loved. Martha? Yes? Has the scullery maid got toothache again today? What makes thee ask that? Because I've just remembered that when I was waiting for you to bring my dinner, I heard that far-off crying again. Just like the other night. Hey, thou mustn't go walking about in corridors and listening. Mr Craven would be that there angry. He's never here. He is the master and he gives his orders. Anyway, I heard it. That's three times now. That was Mrs Medlock's bell. I have to run. This is the strangest house anyone's ever lived in. Ben Weatherstaff? No, <laughs> that like the robin. I never knows when I shall see there which side they'll come from. He's friends with me now. Are you friends with me, Ben Weatherstaff? How long has they been here? I think it's been about a month. That's beginning to do Misselthwaite credit. That's a bit fatter than there was and there's not quite so yellow. I look like a young plucked crow when they first come into this garden. I know I'm fatter. My stockings are getting tighter. They used to make wrinkles. I want to ask you, if you wanted to make a flower garden, what would you plant? Bulbs and sweet-smelling things, but mostly roses. Do you like roses? Yes, I do. I have learned that by a young lady I a gardener too. She had a lot in a place she were fond of, and she loved them like they were children. I've seen her bend over and kiss them. That were as much as ten years ago. Where is she now? Heaven. According to what Parson says. What happened to the roses? They was left to themselves. When roses look brown and dry, how can you tell whether they are dead or alive? Wait till spring. Wait till sun shines on rain and rain falls on sunshine. And then they'll find out. Why does they care so much about roses and such all of a sudden? I want to play that I have a garden of my own. Yeah, well, there's not much else, it's true. Those roses, the ones that were left to themselves, do you ever go and see them? Now, look here, don't ask so many questions. That the worst wench for asking questions I've ever come across. All right. Get there round to the wood and see if there's any rabbits to watch. I've done talking for today. brown squirrel is listening, and two rabbits. You are charming them, like the natives of India charm snakes. There, see, they've not gone far. 
to feel safe still. I'm Dickon, and I know that, Miss Murray. Did you get Martha's letter? That's why I come. Look, I've got the garden tools and all the seeds. Will you show them to me? Aye, of course. Let us sit down on this log and look at them. Here's a lot of mignonette and poppies. Mignonette's the sweetest thing as grows, and poppies will come up and bloom if you just whistle to them. Where's that robin calling us? Is it really calling us? There he is, in the bush. Whose is he? He's Ben Weatherstaff's, but I think he knows me a little. Aye, he knows thee. <whistles> he tells me he's a friend of yours. Do you understand everything a bird say? I've lived on the moor with him till I think I'm one of them. Will these grow for me? I know nothing about gardening. I'll plant them for thee myself. Where is the garden? Why, oh dear. That's got a bit of garden, hasn't that? I... Could you keep a secret if I told you one? It's a great secret. I don't know what I should do if anyone found out. I believe I should die. If I couldn't keep secrets, there'd be no safe on the moor. Aye. I can keep secrets. Well, I've stolen a garden. Nobody wants it. Nobody takes care of it. Nobody ever goes into it. Nobody has any right to take it from me when I care about it and they don't. They're letting it die or shut up by itself. Hey. <laughs> I found it myself and I got into it. I, I was only like the robin. They wouldn't take it from the robin. Where is it? Come with me and I'll show you. Here. Come in. We must close the door. It's a secret garden. I'm the only one in the world who wants it to be alive. It's a queer, pretty place. It's as if a body was in a dream. I never thought as I'd see this place. Did you know about it? I was used to wonder what it was like. Hey, the birds as will be here come springtime. It'd be the safest nesting place in England. No one ever coming near, and tangles of trees and roses to build in. I thought all the roses were dead. Not all of them. Look here. There's lots of dead wood, but this here's a new bit. Are you sure? Aye. It's as wick as you or me. Mother told me what wick means. It means alive. I'm glad it's wick. Let's count how many wick ones there are. They've run wild. But the strongest ones have thrived on it. They've growed and growed and spread and spread till there's a wonder. See here. A body might think this was dead wood. It's not, though. There. Yes, yes, I see. When it looks a bit greenish and juicy like that, it's wick. When the inside is dry and breaks easy, like this here piece, it's done for. If the old wood's cut off, there'll be a fountain of roses here this summer. Here. Now, use the new fork and loosen the earth. That's it, aye. Who cleared the weeds from around the bulbs over there? I did. They were so small, and they looked as if they had no room to breathe. A gardener couldn't have told thee better. Hey, they will be a sight. I'll tell thee something. Someone, besides the robin, must have been here since it was shut up. But the door was locked and the key was buried. Maybe so. But there's been a bit of pruning done here later than ten years ago. But how could it have been done? Aye, how could it? Will you come here and help me? I can dig and pull up weeds and do whatever you tell me. Oh, do come, Dickon. I'll come every day. If thou wants me, it'll be the best fun I've ever had in my life. 
If you will help me to make it come alive, I'll... I'll... I don't know what I'll do. I'll tell thee what they'll do. They'll get fat and strong, and they'll learn to talk to the robin. Dickon, you're as nice as Martha said you were. I like you, and you make the fifth person. Only five folks as the likes. Who is the other four? Your mother, and Martha, and the robin, and Ben Weatherstaff. Do you like me? I likes thee wonderful, and so does the robin. That's two, then. That's two for me. Twelve o'clock. I shall have to go for my dinner. Will you come up tomorrow? Aye. Run and get the victuals. Whatever happens, you... You would never tell. If that was a missile thrush, and showed me where the nest was, does the think I'd tell anyone? That's as safe as a missile thrush. Here's that dinner that's late. Where's that been? I've seen Dickon. I've seen Dickon. I knew he'd come. How does they like him? Oh, I think... I think he's beautiful. He's the best lad as ever was born, but has never thought he was handsome. His nose turns up too much. I like it to turn up. Where will I plant the seeds? How do you know he brought seeds? He'd be sure to. He's such a trusty lad. If I was you, I'd ask Ben Weatherstaff to find you a corner. Don't go troubling the head gardener. He's too grand, Mr Roaches. If it was out of the way and no one wanted it, no one could mind me having it, could they? There wouldn't be no reason. It wouldn't do no harm. Now, I've got something to tell you. Mr Craven came back this morning and I think he wants to see you. Oh, why? He didn't want to see me when I first came. Mrs Medlock says it's because of Mother. She made bold to stop him when he passed through Thwaite Village and she said something that was put him in mind to see you before he goes away again. Martha, is he really a monster? That's not a way to talk. He's thy uncle and thy guardian. It's what someone said of him. When I was in India, I didn't believe it, but I've been thinking, perhaps it's true. Now then. Perhaps that's why he doesn't like people to see him. He's a busy man and he's away travelling a lot. He doesn't have time to see people. When I finish my dinner, I'm going out into the garden. If I'm not here, I expect he will forget about me. Martha? Yes, Mrs Medlock? Her hair's rough. Go and help her brush it and slip on her best dress. Make her neat for Mr Craven. Hurry with her, Martha. We're to go directly. The Secret Garden. Dramatised by Judy Allen from the novel by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Mary Lennox, Jessica Marshall Gardner. Mrs Medlock, Beryl Reed. Ben Weatherstaff, Robin Bailey. Martha, Harriet Walter. Dickon, Ian Taylor. Music was by Elizabeth Parker, and The Secret Garden was directed by John Taylor. The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett Dramatised in five episodes by Judy Allen Mary Lennox, sent to Misselthwaite Manor after the death of her parents, has found the lost garden and she and Dickon, who have begun to plant it, are determined to keep it a secret. Then, Mr Craven Mary's mysterious uncle asked to see her. Episode 3 Come in. This is Miss Mary, sir. I will ring for you when I want you to take her away. Very good, sir. Come here, child. 
Are you well? Yes. You are very thin. I'm getting fatter. I intended to send you a governess or a nurse, but I forgot. Please. Please. What do you want to say? Well, I'm too big for a nurse. And please don't make me have a governess yet. I sent for you today because Mrs. Sowerby said I ought to see you. Her daughter is one of the servants here, I believe. That's Martha. She's my servant, in a way. Mrs. Sowerby said she thought you needed fresh air and freedom and running about. She knows all about children. She has twelve. She said she thought you had better get stronger before you had a governess. It makes me feel stronger when I play and the wind comes over the moor. Where do you play? I don't do any harm. Don't look so frightened. You may do what you like. May I? Of course. I cannot give you the time or attention a guardian should. I, I am too ill, too wretched. But I wish you to be happy, comfortable. Is there anything you want? No, thank you. There is something, isn't there? What is it? Toys? Books? Dolls? Might I have a bit of earth? Earth? What do you mean? To make a garden. A garden. You remind me of someone else who loved gardens and things that grow. You can have as much earth as you want. There. I have rung for Mrs. Medlock to take you away. When you see the bit of earth you want, take it, child, and make it come alive. May I take it for anywhere, if it's not wanted? Anywhere. Uh, goodbye. I shall be away all summer. Yes, sir? Mrs. Medlock, now I have seen the child, I understand what Mrs. Sowerby meant. Give her simple, healthy food and let her have liberty and fresh air. Thank you, sir. I'd always take Susan Sowerby's advice about children myself. Take Miss Mary away now and send picture to me. Martha, he says I may have my garden. He says I may have it where I choose. Hey, that's nice of him, wasn't it? Martha, he is really a nice man. Only his face is so miserable and his forehead is all drawn together. He's a very unhappy man. And he's not a monster at all. Only his shoulders are rather high and crooked. Tomorrow I shall tell Dickon. He's coming here again to help me plant the seeds. <laughs> if Dickon helps me, the seeds will grow like Jack's beanstalk. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sleep with all this noise. The rain is as contrary as I ever was. It came because it knew I did not want it. It sounds just like a person lost on the moor and wandering on and crying. It isn't the wind now. It's different. It's that crying I heard before. Find out what it is. Everybody's in bed, and I don't care about Mrs. Medlock. I don't care. <laughs> Are you a ghost? No, I'm not. Are you one? No. I'm Colin Craven. Who are you? I'm Mary Lennox. Mr. Craven is my uncle. He is my father. Your father? No one ever told me he had a boy. Come here. You are real, aren't you? Not a dream. I'll pinch you if you like, to show you how real I am. You seem to be real. Where did you come from? From my own room. I heard someone crying and I came to find out who it was. What were you crying for? Because I couldn't go to sleep. And because I'm like this always. Ill and having to lie down. Tell me your name again. Mary Lennox. Did no one ever tell you why I had come to live here? They didn't. Why not? Because I should have been afraid you would see me. 
Oh, what a queer house this is. Everything is a kind of secret. Rooms are locked up, and the gardens are locked up. And you, have you been locked up? No. I stay in this room because I don't want to be moved out of it. It tires me too much. Does your father come and see you? Sometimes, when I'm asleep. He almost hates me. Why? My mother died when I was born, and it makes him wretched to look at me. He thinks I don't know, but I've heard people talking. Have you been in this room always? Nearly always. I hate fresh air, and I hate people to see me and talk about me. If you don't like people to see you, do you want me to go away? No. Where did you live before you came here? In India. My mother died in the cholera, and my father too. Your father is my guardian, so I had to come here. I will show you something. Do you see that silk curtain hanging above the mantelpiece? Is it hanging over a picture? There is a cord at the side. Go and pull it. Oh, what a beautiful girl. She has such a laughing face. She is my mother. I don't see why she died. Sometimes I hate her for doing it. Draw the curtain again. Why do you want the curtain to hide her? She smiles too much when I am ill and miserable. Mrs. Medlock didn't mean me ever to find out about you. What would she do if she knew I was here? She must do as I tell her. Mrs. Medlock must? Everyone is obliged to please me. If I were to live, this place would belong to me. They all know that. Do you think you won't live? Ever since I remembered anything, I've heard people say that I shan't. And that even if I do, I shall have a crooked back. I shouldn't think Dr. Craven would be sorry if I died. Who is Dr. Craven? He is my father's cousin. He is younger than my father, and he will inherit Mistlethwaite from her if I don't live. Do you want to live? No. But I don't want to die. When I feel ill, I lie here and think about the lump growing on my back until I cry and cry. I've heard you crying three times. You have been shut up in this room for as long as the garden door has been locked. What garden door was locked? <laughs> Just a garden Mr. Craven hates. What sort of garden? No one has been allowed to go into it for ten years. There are other gardens. I go into them every day and watch the bulbs pushing up little green points. What are bulbs? They are daffodils and lilies and snowdrops. They are working under the earth now, growing upwards because spring is coming. What is spring like? It's the sun shining on the rain, and the rain falling on the sunshine. You don't see spring in rooms if you're ill. Talk about that locked garden. Don't you want to see it? Yes. I do too. I'm going to make them open the door. Oh dear. I will make them take me there, and I will let you go too. Oh don't. Everything will be spoiled. Why? You said you wanted to see it. I do. But if you make them open the door and take you in, it'll never be a secret again. A secret? What do you mean? You see, if the garden was a secret, and if we could get into it, we might be able to help things grow. And no one would know but us. Don't you see? Oh, don't you see how much nicer it would be if it was a secret? I never had a secret. I feel almost sure I can find out how to get in sometime. And then... Perhaps we might find some boy who would push your wheeled chair, and we could go alone, just us. I think I should not mind fresh air in a secret garden. So will you keep it a secret? Yes, I believe I will. I shall look every day for the garden door. Yes, you must. And you can tell me about it afterwards. Martha shall bring you to see me. Martha knew about you all the time? Yes. She often attends to me when my nurse is away. Your eyes look sleepy. Shall I go now? I wish I could sleep before you leave me. Shall I sing a lullaby as my Aya used to do in India? I should like that. Sweet daddy, ee, sweet daddy. Mm -hmm. la, 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 sweet daddy. That is nice. La, 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 la.
It's a horrid day again. Listen to the rain, Martha. Does they want me to sit with thee for a while? I can knit a stocking as well in the nursery as I can in servants' hall. I wish you would. What's the matter? That looks as if that's something to say. I have. I found out what the crying was. That hasn't. Never. I heard it in the night, and I got up and went to see where it came from. It was Colin. I found him. Hey, Miss Mary, thou shouldn't have done it. Thou shouldn't. I never told thee nothing about him. But if Mrs Medlock finds out, I shall lose my place. And what will Mother do? You won't lose your place. He says Mrs Medlock has to do what he pleases. Thou doesn't know what he's like when anything vexes him. When he's in a passion, he'll fair scream with hysterics just to frighten us. He wasn't vexed. He let me see his mother's picture. And before I left, I sang him to sleep. I can scarce believe thee. It's as if thou'd walked straight into a lion's den. He won't let strangers look at him. I looked at him all the time, and he looked at me. We stared. <sighs> and does that mean to say he was nice to thee? I think he almost liked me. Then thou must have bewitched him. What is the matter with him, Martha? Nobody knows for sure. Mr Craven near went off his head when he was born. It was because Mrs Craven died, like I told you. He wouldn't set eyes on baby. He just raved and said it'd have a crooked back like his and it'd better die. Has Colin got a crooked back? He didn't look as if he had. He hasn't yet. But they was afraid his back was weak. And they've always kept him lying down and not letting him walk. One day a big doctor came from London. And he said there'd been too much medicine and too much letting him have his own way. But it made no difference. I think he's a very spoilt boy. He's the worst young nout as ever was. Though he has had more than his share of real illness. He's had rheumatic fever and typhoid, and he's had coughs and colds that have near killed him. Do you think he will die? Mother says there's no reason why any child should live that gets no fresh air and doesn't do nothing but lie on his back and think of illness. I wonder if it would not do him good to go out in the garden and watch things grow. One of the worst fits he ever had was one time they took him out and a new gardener, as didn't know the rules, looked at him curious. He threw himself into a passion and cried himself into a fever. If he ever gets angry with me, I'll never go and see him again. He'll have thee if he wants thee. Thou may as well know that from the start. That bell will be the nurse wanting me to stay with him for a bit. Oh, I hope he's in a good temper. Well, I'm not in a very good temper. There's nothing at all to do here when it rains. I may go and visit the mouse and her babies again. Miss Mary, come with me quickly. Where to? Master Colin has sent me to fetch thee. That has bewitched him. Oh, I shall lose my place for sure. Come in. I've been thinking about you all morning. I've been thinking about you too. You don't know how frightened Martha is. She thinks Mrs Medlock will send her away because of this. Martha, have you to do what I please or have you not? Uh, everybody has, sir. Well then, if I order you to bring Miss Mary to me, how can Medlock send you away because of it? Please don't let her, sir. I'll send her away if she dares to say a word about such a thing. Thank you, sir. I'll take care of you. Now, go away. Thank you, sir. Why do you look at me like that? What are you thinking about? I'm thinking about two things. Once in India, I saw a boy who was a Raja. He had rubies and emeralds and diamonds stuck all over him. He spoke to his people just as you spoke to Martha. Everybody had to do everything he told them in a minute. I think they would have been killed if they hadn't. I shall make you tell me about Rajas presently. But first, tell me what the second thing was. I was thinking how different you are from Dickon. Who is Dickon? What a strange name. He's Martha's brother. He's not like anyone else in the world. He can charm animals and birds, just as the natives in India charm snakes. He plays a very soft tune in his pipe. And they come and listen. There is a picture of a snake charmer in this book. Ah, there. Can he do that? Yes, um, but here it says the piping is magic. Dickon doesn't call it magic. 
He says it's because he lives on the moor and he loves it so much and knows their ways. I couldn't ever go on the moor. You might sometime. How could I? I'm going to die. How do you know? They're always whispering about it. They wish I would, too. If they wished I would, I wouldn't. Did the Grand Doctor from London say you were going to die? No. He said the lad might live if he would make up his mind to it. I'll tell you who would help you make up your mind to it. I believe Dickon would. He knows all about eggs and nests and where foxes and badgers and otters live. And he can talk to Ben Weatherstaff's robin. Who's that? Ben Weatherstaff is one of the gardeners. He talks to the robin in English. But Dickon talks in bird language and the robin understands him. I believe I shouldn't mind Dickon looking at me. He's a sort of animal charmer, and I'm a boy animal. <laughs> Why don't you like to be looked at? Because people stare and say, poor child. <laughs> it's because I'm thin and ill. I was thin when I first came here, but now Martha says even my hair is getting fatter. Once a lady patted my cheek and said, poor child, <laughs> and I screamed out loud and bit her hand. She was so frightened she ran away. <laughs> she thought you'd gone mad like a dog. Why didn't you scream and bite me when I first came in? I thought you were a ghost, or a dream. You can't bite a ghost or a dream, and they don't care if you scream. I'm not a ghost. I'm your cousin. <laughs> oh, no. What is all this? Oh, Dr. Craven, sir. I don't know how it's happened. This is my cousin, Mary Lennox. I asked her to come and talk to me. I like her. Mrs. Medlock? Oh, sir, I don't know who told her. There's not a servant in the place that a dare talk. Nobody told her anything. She heard me crying and found me here. I'm glad she came. Now then, my boy, how is your pulse? Hmm? Mm, yes. I see. I'm afraid there's been too much excitement. Excitement is not good for you. I should be excited if she kept away. She makes me better. Martha must bring up her tea with mine. He did look rather better, sir. Mm. But he looked better this morning before she came into the room. She came into the room last night. She stayed with me a long time. She sang an Indian song to me and it made me go to sleep. I was better when I wakened up. I wanted my breakfast. I want my tea now. He should not talk too much, young lady. I was talking too. You must not forget that you are ill, my boy. You must not forget that you tire easily. I want to forget it. She makes me forget it. That's why I like her. Here's Martha with your tea. You may both go. I will come and see you again shortly. And I will hope to find your pulse a little steadier. Now, if you'll eat, I will. These muffins look nice and hot. Tell me about Rajas. It must be very early. No one is up. Not even the stable boys. What are you? Why are you staring at me? I think I hope you're not going to stay in the garden with me. <laughs> oh, Dickon! How could you get here so early? The sun has only just got up. I was up long before him. The world's all fur and be gone again this morning. Everything's nest building and breathing out scents. I couldn't have stayed away. Oh, Dickon, I'm so happy I can scarcely breathe. <coughs> oh, what is that bird? It was watching me when I came here. He's a crow. His name's Sot. He's quite large. He's been with me since he was a young'un. No need to fear him. He doesn't fear thee. He sees I trust thee. And look, here, see the crocuses, all in bloom, purple and orange and gold. They came up because I cleared the spaces, didn't they? Oh, Dick and I helped them, and they are beautiful. What was that that flew by? Us monarchs scarce breathe. It's Ben Weatherstaff's robin. 
building his nest in that corner. Is it all right if we sit on the grass here? Aye, but us mustn't seem as if us was watching him too close. What about Soot? He won't bother him, but us must try to look as if us was trees and bushes. I'm not sure I know how to, but I shouldn't be surprised if you put out branches and green leaves. It's part of springtime, this nest building is. They've got their way of doing things, and a body had better not meddle. You can lose a friend in springtime if you're too curious. If we talk about him, I can't help looking at him. He'll like it better if us talks of something else. There is something I want to ask you. Go on then. Do you kn- do you know about Colin? I. I've been to talk to him every day this week, while it was wet and I couldn't come here. He says I'm making him forget about being ill and dying. I'm glad of that. I'm right down glad. How did you know about him? Everybody knowed there was a little lad, and that Mister Craven didn't like him to be talked about. How did they find out about him? Martha was in a fine state the last time she came home. She said Dad heard him fretting, and that they was asking questions, and she didn't know what to say. Well, the wind woke me up one night, wuthering, and I heard him crying. I followed the sound until I found his room. His face is very white, and his eyes are very big. They say as Mister Craven can't bear to see him when he's awake, because his eyes is so like his mother's. Do you think Mister Craven wants him to die? No, but he wishes he'd never been born. He's afraid he'll look at him some day and find his back is crooked. Colin is afraid of that himself. He's afraid he'll find a lump growing on his back. No lad could get well as thought of them sort of things. When first we got in this garden, it seemed like everything was grey. Look around now and tell me if that doesn't see a difference. The grey wall is changing. It's as if a green mist were creeping over it. Aye, and it'll be greener and greener till all the grey's gone. And look at these buds. There's going to be apple blossoms and cherry blossoms overhead, and peach and plum trees in bloom against the walls, and there will be flowers among the grass. But there is a lot to do. I won't go and see Colin this afternoon. I'll come straight back here after dinner, and work while it's still light. Has the notice that the robin and his mate has been working while we've been sitting here? Look at him, perched on that branch, wondering where it'd be best to put that twig. Where's ever that puts it, it'll be all right. Oh, I do like to hear you talk to him. The noses won't bother thee. Oz is nest building too, in a way. Can't I guess what I'm thinking? I know it's something nice. I believe it's something about Colin. I'm thinking that if he was out here, he wouldn't be watching for lumps to grow on his back. He'd be watching for buds to break on the rose bushes, and he'd likely be healthier. Could us ever get him in the humour to come out here in his carriage? I've been wondering that myself. It'll be good for him, I'll warrant. Us would not be thinking he'd better not have been born. Us would just be two children watching garden grow, and he'd be another. He says he hates going out of doors, but he likes to hear about this garden because it's a secret. I haven't told him yet that I know how to get in. Us'll get him out here some time for sure. Oh, I hope it's tea time. I'm so hungry. Martha, what's the matter? I've been waiting and waiting for thee to come in. Thou must come to Master Collins' room at once. He's been sending for you and sending for you. Didn't you tell him I'd been busy in the garden until now? Aye, I did, and he was now going into one of his tantrums. Oh, quickly! There's been a nice to do all afternoon to keep him quiet. Colin. Colin. Why didn't you come? I was working in the garden with Dickon. I won't let that boy come here if you go and stay with him instead of coming to talk to me. If you send Dickon away, I'll never come into this room again. You'll have to if I want you. I won't. They'll make you. They shall drag you in. Shall they, Mister Roger? They may drag me in, but they can't make me talk when they get me here. You're selfish. What are you? You're the most selfish boy I ever saw. I'm not as selfish as your fine Dickon is. He keeps you playing in the dirt when he knows I'm all by myself. He's nicer than any other boy that ever lived. He's. 
He's like an angel. A nice angel. He's a common cottage boy off the moor. He's a thousand times better than a common rajah. I'm not as selfish as you because I'm always ill. And I'm sure there is a lump coming on my back and I'm going to die. You're not. You know I am. Everybody says so. You just say that to make people sorry. You're not allowed to talk to me like this. You'll make me have hysterics. Have them then. Then I'll die. I don't believe it. Get out of the room! You need not throw your pillow at me. I'm going and I won't come back. I was going to tell you all sorts of nice things. Dick had brought his crow with him and all the crocuses are in bloom. I was going to tell you all about them. No, I won't tell you a single thing. Did thou see him? Yes. See? Mr Craven sent this for you. It looks as if it has picture books in it. He asked me if I wanted anything, but I only asked for a bit of garden. See? There are picture books. Oh, oh Lord. Look, it's beautiful. Oh, they're as beautiful as the ones Colin has. Oh, there are games. On oh, a little writing case. And a gold pen and ink stand. The first thing I shall write with that pen will be a letter to tell him how much I am obliged. And shall you show the books to Master Colin? I shall not. He threw his pillow at me, and I have told him I will never go back again. Oh, thou feel differently tomorrow. Thou mun go to bed early tonight. All that fresh air has made thee weary. <laughs> What is that horrible sound? It's Colin. He's having hysterics. How awful it sounds. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I can't bear it. The Secret Garden, dramatized by Judy Allen from the novel by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Mary Lennox, Jessica Marshall Gardner. Mrs. Medlock, Beryl Reed. Martha, Harriet Walter. Mr. Craven, James Faulkner. Colin Craven, Guy Faulkner. Dickon, Ian Taylor. Dr. Craven, James Green. Music was by Elizabeth Parker, and The Secret Garden was directed by John Taylor. The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett Dramatized in five episodes by Judy Allen Mary Lennox, sent to Misselthwaite Manor after her parents' death, has finally met her strange cousin Colin, who believes he is very ill and may die. But when Colin hears that Mary has been spending time with Dickon, planting the secret garden, he throws one of his uncontrollable tantrums. Episode 4 She can't seem to calm him. He'll do himself harm. You come and try. He turned me out of his room this morning. That's right. You come and scold him. Give him something new to think about. Somebody ought to beat him. <laughs> you stop! I hate you. Everybody hates you. I wish everybody would run out of this house and let you scream yourself to death. And you will scream yourself to death in a minute. And I wish you would. That's the way. Oh, dear. Master Colin, please. 
And you scream and I'll scream, I'll scream too. And I can scream louder than you can, and I'll fight you. I'll fight you. I can't stop. I can't. I can't. You can. Half the elves use your hysterics and your temper. Hysterics. 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 I felt a lump. I felt it. I knew I should. My back will go crooked and then I shall die. You didn't feel a lump. There's nothing the matter with your horrid back. Nurse, come here and show me his back this minute. Perhaps, perhaps he won't let me. <laughs> Master Colin. All right. Show her. She'll see then. <laughs> There's not a single lump here. If you ever say there is, I shall laugh. I didn't know you thought there was a lump. I could have told him there was no lump there. Could you? Yes, sir. There, you see. Master Colin, why didn't you ask the nurse? Do you think... Do you think I could live to grow up? You probably will if you do what you're told to do and don't give way to your temper and get out in the fresh air. I'll go out with you, Mary. I shan't hate the fresh air if we can... Shh. I mean, if we can find Dickon to push my chair. Uh, I'll leave you now, nurse. Everything's <laughs> under control. Right you are, Mrs Medlock. Now, sir, let me tidy this bed of yours. I'll bid you good night. <sighs> good night, Mrs Medlock. Miss Mary, you must go back to bed. He'll drop off after a while, then I'll lie down myself in the next room. Would you like me to sing that song that I learnt from my ayah? Oh, yes. It is such a soft song. I shall go to sleep in a minute. I will get him to sleep. You can go if you like. Oh, well. If he doesn't drop off in about half an hour, you must call me. Very well. I almost said about the garden... I'm sorry, Mary. You said you had a lot of nice things to tell me. Will you tell me them now? I think I may have found out something about the way into it. If you will go to sleep, I will tell you tomorrow. Oh, Mary, if I could go into it, I think I should live to grow up. Instead of singing the Aya song, tell me what you think the garden is like inside. All right. I think it has been left alone so long that it has grown into all lovely tangles. I think the roses have climbed until they hang from the branches and walls and creep over the ground, almost like a strange grey mist. When the summer comes, there will be curtains and fountains of roses. I think the ground is full of daffodils and snowdrops, working their way out of the dark. And perhaps, perhaps the robin has found a mate and is building a nest. There, now you are asleep. Oh, Dickon, Dickon! Well, you've brought your crow. Aye, he came with us. Oh, you have a squirrel in each pocket. This one is not. Here, come up on my shoulder, lad. That's it. And this one is Shell. They're quite tame. Aye. They know me now. Dickon, I have to tell you. Colin had a screaming fit last night. It was terrible. That poor lad. I told him I was coming to see you today, and he said he would think about you and your crow and the robin. We mun get him out here, watching and listening and sniffing up the air. And we mun not lose no time about it. Aye, that we mun. <laughs> I didn't know if I'd been learning Yorkshire. When I get back to the house to talk to Colin... I'll ask him if thou cannot come and see him tomorrow morning and bring thy creatures with thee. Thou mun talk Yorkshire like that to Mr Colin. They'll make him laugh, and there's nought as good for ill folk as laughing is. Mother says. I'm going to talk Yorkshire to him this very day. Dickon. Aye? If we bring Colin here, he may ask something about the tree, the one whose branch broke off ten years ago. We mun look as if it wasn't no different from the other trees. We couldn't never tell him the fall killed his mother. Poor lad. I know. Mother thinks maybe Mrs Craven's still here. Happen it was her set us to work and told us to bring him here. You mean... magic? If that's what they likes to call it. Is they ready for some work? I am that. Smell like flowers and fresh things. It's the wind from the moor. 
It's the springtime and smells so agreeably. <laughs> what are you doing? I never heard you talk like that before. Doesn't that understand a bit of Yorkshire <laughs> when thou hears it? And thy Yorkshire lad thyself, born and bred, eh, I wonder thou art not ashamed of thy face. <laughs> How Dickon talks? Aye, though I cannot talk as greatly as Dickon and Martha can. <laughs> You've seen Dickon? Yes, and this time he's brought his squirrels with him. When he told them to, they jumped up onto his shoulders. Do they really understand everything Dickon says? Dickon says anything will understand you, if you're friends with it for sure. But you have to be friends for sure. I wish I was friends with things. But I never had anything to be friends with. And I can't bear people. Can't you bear me? Yes, I can. It's very funny, but I even like you. <laughs> then Weatherstaff said, I was like him. He said, we're neither of us much to look at, and we're as sour as we looked. I think you're like him too. I often feel sour. I don't feel as sour as I used to. I want to see Dickon. I'm glad you said that, because... Because... Because what? Oh, can I trust you? Yes. I trusted Dickon because birds and animals trusted him. Can I trust you for sure? For sure? Yes, yes. Well, Dickon will come to see you tomorrow, and he'll bring his creatures with him. Oh, and that's not all. The rest is better. I found the door into the garden. Oh, Mary, shall I live to get into it? Of course. Don't be silly. You've told me so much about it. It sounds just as if you'd really seen it. I had seen it. I found the key and got in weeks ago. But I daren't tell you. I daren't tell you because I was afraid I couldn't trust you. For sure. Oh, Mary. Mrs. Medlock, Dr. Craven's here to see Master Colin. Mrs. Medlock? I'll, uh, I'll take you up to him, sir. This way. I understand he had one of his tantrums again last night. The boy is half insane with hysteria, self-indulgence. You wait till you see him, sir. That plain-faced child has bewitched him. Mm -hmm. Last night she flew at him like a little cat and ordered him to stop screaming. And he was so startled that he did. And this afternoon, well, it's past crediting. These long spires of blue ones. We'll have a lot of these. They're called delphiniums. Dickens says they're larkspurs, made big and grand. There are clumps there already. Dr. Craven. Ah, I told you he was sitting up. I see. No. I'm sorry to hear you were ill last night, my boy. I'm surprised you're not in bed. I am much better now. Yes, well, I must examine you before we can be sure of that. Now... Let me see. Hmm. Oh. Well, the pulse is fairly steady. I told you I'm better. Nevertheless, you should be careful after what you suffered last night. I should just like to take your blood pressure. Hmm. Ah. I'm going out in my chair in a day or two, if it's fine. Well, it must be very fine. Then you must be careful not to tire yourself. Fresh air won't tire me. Oh. Hmm. Blood pressure normal. I thought you did not like fresh air. I don't when I'm by myself, but my cousin is going out with me. And the nurse, of course. No, I will not have the nurse. My cousin knows how to take care of me. I'm always better when she's with me. But the nurse will push your chair. A very strong boy I know will push my carriage. Well, he must be a strong boy and a steady boy. Who is he? It's Dickon. Oh, Dickon. Well, if it is Dickon, you'll be safe enough. He's as strong as a moor pony, is Dickon. And he's trusty. He's the trustiest lad in Yorkshire. <laughs> Did Dickon teach you that? I'm learning it as if it was French. It's like a, a native dialect in India. <laughs> well, if it amuses you. Uh, did you take your bromide last night, Colin? No. Mary taught me to sleep. About spring creeping into a garden. Oh, well, that sounds soothing. But you must remember... I don't want to remember. When I lie by myself and remember, I begin to have pains everywhere. If there was a doctor who could make you forget you were ill instead of remembering it, I would have him brought here. Very well. 
I will call again in a couple of days, unless I am sent for sooner. I'll see you out, sir. Well, sir, could you have believed it? It certainly is a new state of affairs, and there's no denying it is better than the old one. I believe Susan Sarve is right. I saw her in Thwaite Village yesterday, and she said to me, that mayn't be a good child, she mayn't be a pretty one, but she's a child, and children need children. Mm. Susan Sarve is the best sick nurse I know. When I find her in a cottage, I know the chances are that I shall save my patient. Yesterday she told me something she says to her children. She says geography tells us the world is shaped like an orange. Mm. Never think as you're going to own the whole orange or you'll get some hard knocks. <laughs> she says to me, what children learn from children is there's no sense in grabbing the whole orange or you'll likely not get even the pips and them's too bitter to eat. <laughs> Here's your coat, sir. Thank you. Yes, she's a shrewd woman. I say to her, Susan... If you was a different woman and you didn't talk such broad Yorkshire, I've seen the times when I should have said you was clever. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Now where's thou after in such a hurry? How to see Colin. He slept well last night and this morning, for a wonder. The nurse says he woke smiling. Beautiful. You never saw anything so beautiful. You've been out. That's the nice smell of leaves. It has come. I thought it had come the other morning, but it was only on its way. Oh, it's come now, the spring. Dickon says so. Open the window. Perhaps you may hear golden trumpets. <laughs> That's the fresh air coming in. Line your back and draw long breaths of it. That's what Dickon does. He says he feels it in his veins and it makes him strong. And he feels as if he could live forever and ever. Forever and ever? Does it make him feel like that? Breathe it! Breathe it! Oh, there are flowers uncurling and buds on everything. And the birds are in such a hurry about their nests. Some of them are fighting for places in the secret garden. And the roses look as wick as wick can be. And Dickon has brought his crow and the squirrels. And a newborn lamb. A lamb? Oh, nurse. Yes, Master Colin. Nurse, I'm going to get up to the sofa for breakfast, and my cousin will have breakfast with me. Are you sure you're not chilly, Master Colin, with the window open like that? No, I'm breathing long breaths of fresh air. It makes you strong. Very well. I'll give the order for two breakfasts. Wait a moment. A boy and a crow and two squirrels and a newborn lamb are coming to see me this morning. Yes, sir. Tell Martha to bring them here as soon as they arrive. The boy is her brother, and he is an animal charmer. I hope the animals won't bite, Master Colin. Charmers' animals never bite. There are snake charmers in India, and they could put their snake's head in their mouths. Goodness me. Now you may get the breakfasts. Yes, sir. You will begin to get fatter, just as I did. I never wanted my breakfast when I was in India, and I always want it now. I want mine this morning. Perhaps it is the fresh air. Mary, are you sure Dickon will come? He will come. Did you hear a call? Oh, yes. That's soot. Did you hear a tiny bleat? Yes. Dickon has brought the newborn lamb with him. If you please, sir. Oh. Here's Dickon and his creatures. Oh, Colin, look at the lamb. Sit you down, Master Colin, and I'll put him on the lap. Look. <laughs> it's spotting me with its head. <laughs> What's it doing? It wants its mother. I brought it to thee a bit hungry. Because I know that I'd like to see it feed. Here's its bottle. Take it from me. Come on, little un. This is what thou wants. There, now. <laughs> he likes it. Look, Soot wants to go out. I'll okay. open the window. Aye. He's not used to the inside of rooms. Go on, Soot. There go the squirrels, too. Don't they like me? 
They're playing in the tree by the window. <laughs> They'll come in when they've done exploring. See? The lamb's taking milk from thee. <sighs> Where did you get the lamb? I was watching the skylark on the moor, and I heard a new lamb bleating with hunger, and I knowed it wouldn't be hungry if it hadn't lost its mother. So I went off searching. Its coat is so soft. Hey, I did have a search for it. But at last I found it. Half dead with cold. Oh. It's warm now. Colin and I have been looking through this garden book, Dickon. See, these are some of the flowers we thought we'd plant in the secret garden. How do you say that, their name? Aqua Legia. Us calls that columbine. There's some big clumps of columbine there already. They'll look like a bed of blue and white butterflies when they're out. I'm going to see them. I am going to see them. But we mun keep it a secret. I can push the chair. And us can go the long way round. And not go near the secret garden until we're sure no one is about. There will not be anyone about. I shall see to it. The lamb is going to sleep in my arms. Oh. Aye. That's fed him. And he trusts it. So it wants us to go outside. We will. Very soon. I will send for the head gardener. Roach, I think his name is. Master Colin. Oh, you're a roach, are you? Uh, uh, yes, sir. I sent for you to give you some important orders. Uh, very good, sir. I'm going out in my chair at about two o'clock this afternoon. None of the gardeners are to be anywhere near the long walk by the garden walls. Everyone is to keep away until I send word that they may go back to their work. Uh, uh, very good, sir. Mary, what is the thing you say in India when you're finished talking and you want people to leave? You say, you have my permission to go. You have my permission to go, Roach. But remember, this is very important. Uh, very good, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. It's a fine day, nurse, but he must be dressed warmly if he's to go out. Yes, Dr Craven. Here's your coat, Master Colin. Let me help you with it. Colin, your eyes are as big as saucers. What are you thinking about? About what it will look like. The garden? Here's the sleeve for your arm. The springtime. I've really never seen it before. I never saw it in India because there wasn't any. Now, sir, hold still while I fasten these buttons. You make sure he has a rug as well. Mm -hmm. I've got a picture of spring in one of my books. Crowds of people and children with garlands and branches with blossoms on them. Everyone laughing and dancing and playing on pipes. Oh, that's what it feels like. When if all the flowers and leaves and birds and wild creatures dance past at once, what a crowd it would be. Although you'll be in your wheeled chair, I'll put your boots on to be proper. And Dickon will be leading them. Yes. <laughs> this is one of his good days, sir. I wish he'd let you go with him. <laughs> I'd rather give up the case this minute, sir, than hear you suggest it. I hadn't really decided to suggest it. We'll try the experiment. Dickens a boy I'd trust with a newborn child. Now, Master Colin, Dr Craven is going to carry you downstairs to your wheeled chair. There are so many sounds of singing and humming and calling out. There's nobody about. They've all been witched away. Here's the fountain garden. I came here before. I did not like it then. In a moment, we shall be at the long walk. What is that scent on the wind? It's gorse, opening out on the moor. Hey, the bees are at it wonderful today. This is it. This is the long walk. See the ivy over the walls? This is where I used to walk up and down and wonder and wonder. But I can see nothing. There is no door. That's what I thought. Over there, that is the garden where Ben Weatherstaff works. Is it? He isn't there now. Now look, this is where the robin flew over the wall. Oh, I wish he'd come again. And look, under that lilac bush, that is where he perched on a little heap of earth and showed me the key. Where? Just there? Yes. 
And this is where I stood to talk to him, and he chirped at me from the top of this wall. Are we near? And this is the ivy the wind blew back. I'll pull it aside. And here is the handle. And here is the door. <coughs> Dickon, push him in. Push him in quickly. I can't look. I can't look. Now the moon look. Oh. I shall get well. I shall get well. Mary, Dickon, I shall get well and I shall live forever and ever. Hey, it's a greatly afternoon. <laughs> that there is a good bit of Yorkshire. <laughs> Look at the flowers in here and the trees, all in blossom. There's more hidden inside these walls and in the whole rest of the garden. See the plum blossom? Hey, the bees love it. Look who there, cherry trees. This here? This is the feather of a woodpecker. How do you know? Dickon knows everything. Look, Colin, look where the daffodils and irises are coming out. <laughs> there, and over there in those grey stone urns. I wonder if we shall see the robin. They'll see him when the eggs hatch is out. He'll be so busy feeding the young ones, <laughs> his head will swim. Mother says she's watched the little chaps when it seemed like the sweat must be dropping off them. Shh, we mustn't make too much noise. It's a very old tree over there, isn't it? Oh, uh, uh, yes. The branches are quite grey, and there's not a single leaf anywhere. It's quite dead, isn't it? Aye, but, but, but them roses has climbed all over it. It'll be full of flowers in summer. It won't seem dead then. It looks as if a big branch had been broken off. I wonder how it was done. <sighs> Look at that robin. There he is. He's foraging for his mate. Where? Where is he? See? Yes. I see him. I don't want this afternoon ever to end. But I shall come back tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after. And you'll get plenty of fresh air, won't you? I'm going to get nothing else. I've seen the spring now, and I'm going to see the summer. I'm going to see everything grow here. I'm going to grow here myself. <laughs> that thou will. Us'll have thee walking about here and digging, same as other folk afore long. Walk? Dig? Shall I? For sure thou will. That's got legs of their own, same as other folks. Nothing really ails them, but they are thin and weak. They shake so much that I'm afraid to stand on them. When thou stops being afraid, thou stand on them, and thou stop being afraid in a bit. I shall. You shall. Someone is watching us. There's no one but us can get in. I shut the door. I locked it. But who is that man? Man? Look, his head is just coming over the top of the wall. It's Ben Weatherstaff. He must have heard us and brought a ladder. I don't think he's seen us yet. The plum tree is hiding us. He can see me now. However it well did I get in there, the young bees I... I found the door. I never thought much of thee. Always asking questions and poking the nose where it was no wanted. I never know how they got so thick with me. If it hadn't been for Robin, drat him. Ben Weatherstaff, it was the Robin who showed me the way. The young Baden, when the badness on a Robin, him showing it way, him. He didn't know he was doing it, but he did. I can't explain why you're shaking your fist at me. If my rheumatics wasn't so bad, I'd climb over this wall and give thee a hiding. Why does thou think Mr. Craven locked door? He'll not allow no one in there. Get thee out. The Secret Garden Dramatised by Judy Allen from the novel by Francis Hodgson Burnett Mary Lennox, Francis Marshall Gardner. Mrs. Medlock, Beryl Reed. Ben Weatherstaff, Robin Bailey. Martha, Harriet Walter. Colin, Guy Faulkner. Dickon, Ian Taylor. Dr. Craven, James Green. Nurse, Joan Walker. Mr. Roach, Fraser Carr. Music was by Elizabeth Parker, and The Secret Garden was directed by John Taylor.
The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett Dramatised in five episodes by Judy Allen Colin has met Dickon and Mary has shown him the secret garden. But during one of their visits, they are disturbed by Ben Weatherstaff. Episode 5. Get thee out of there, that young madam. I'm not doing any harm. Dickon, wheel me over there quickly and stop beside Mary. Get me out of there at once. Ben Weatherstaff, do you know who I am? Uh, yeah, I do. The mother's eyes are staring at me out of the face. That, that the poor cripple. I am not a cripple. I am your master when father is away. Dickon, help me stand. I Come on, then. Look at me! Eh, hey, lad. God bless thee. Get down from that ladder and follow the wall in that direction. Yes, sir. Mary, go and let him in. I told you that could stand as soon as they stop being afraid. Are you making magic? That's doing magic the cell. The same magic has made these here crocuses work out of the earth. I must be standing when Weatherstaff gets here, but I may need something to lean on. This will do. With the staff. Look at me. Have I a crooked back? Have I crooked legs? Not a sort. What did they shut the cell up for? Everyone thought I was going to die. I'm not. I die? Has got too much pluck in thee. See, Miss Mary's fetched the rug. Sit down, young master, and give me me orders. What work do you do in the gardens, with the staff? Anything what I'm told to do. I'm kept on by favour, because their mother liked me. This was her garden, wasn't it? Ah, she were main fond on it. It is my garden now. You shall help us to care for it. But you must come when no one can see you. I've come here before when no one seen me. But no one has been in for ten years. Well, I'm no one. I came over at wall until rheumatics held me back these last two years. I come and did a bit of pruning. I couldn't make out how it had been done. Ah, uh, she was such a young, pretty thing. She says to me once, Ben, she says, if I'm ill or if I go away, you must take care of my roses. Well, when she did go away, Mr Craven gave the order that no one was ever to come nigh. <laughs> but I come. She'd gave her order first. It wouldn't be half as wicked if they hadn't done it. I'm glad with the staff. You already know how to keep the secret. Yeah, I say. Mary, pass me that trowel. Here. I, I want to dig. Does I want to plant something? Yes, quick. Here's a clump of lilies of the valley. I've been separating them. Yeah, uh, give them to me, Dickon. Here, lad. Set it at earth. Same as a king does when he goes to a new place. There, it's planted. It's planted. I have stood and I have walked and I have dug. And this is only the first day. <laughs> you should not have stayed in the garden so long, my boy. He was in his wheelchair most of the time. You must not overexert yourself. I am not tired. Tomorrow I shall go again. I am afraid that would not be wise. It would not be wise to stop me. I am going. I will call again in the morning. Try to rest now. Mary, what are you looking at me like that for? I was thinking it must have been horrid to have had to be polite for ten years to a boy who was always rude. I would never have done it. Am I rude? If you had been his own boy and he had been a slapping sort of man, he would have slapped you. But he daren't. No, he daren't. It is always having your own way that has made you so peculiar. Am I peculiar? Yes, very. 
But you needn't be cross, because so am I peculiar, and so is Ben Weatherstaff. I shall stop being peculiar if I go every day to the garden. There is magic in there, Mary. I'm sure there is. I'm sure too. Is this still spring, or is it summer now? Spring comes sudden, but summer creeps in more gradual-like. But look at all our silky puppies. And the delphiniums and columbines in the urns by the walls there. And the roses. Can I ever smell them? Aye, it's summer. It's magic. Magic made the dead card and come alive. Now I want you all to stand in a row and listen to me. Aye, aye, sir. There is magic in everything. And we should get hold of it and make it do things for us. Like electricity and horses and steam. Aye, 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 sir. Every day I'm going to call to the magic over and over again. And you must all do it too. And I believe the magic will come and make me strong. Will you help? Yes. Aye. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye. Dickon, do you think the experiment will work? Aye, that I do. Same as the seeds do when the sun shines on them. Shall us begin it now? Let's all sit cross-legged under this tree. I'm tired and I want to sit down. Hey, they mustn't begin by saying that tired. That might spoil the magic. That's true. I must only think of the magic. Shall we sway backwards and forwards as we chant? Yeah, I, I can't do no swaying backwards and forward. I've got the rheumatics. Magic will take them away. But for now we will only chant. No, I can't do no chanting neither. They turned me out at church choir the only time I ever tried it. Then I will chant. The sun is shining, the sun is shining, that is the magic. The, the sun, sun is shining, shining, the sun is shining, that is the magic. The flowers are growing, the roots are stirring, that is the magic. The flowers are growing, the roots are stirring, that is the magic. The sun is shining, the sun is shining, that is the magic. The flowers are growing, the roots are stirring, that is the magic. Look, the magic works! This is to be the biggest secret of all. No one shall know I'm growing stronger. Then one day, when my father is back at Misselthwaite, I shall walk into his study and say, I'm quite well and I shall live to be a man. He won't believe his eyes. <laughs> if that pretty young mother could see thee now. I was just saying to Dr Craven, Master Colin, that your appetite is improving very much, just like Miss Mary here. It's because of the fresh air. You stay out in the garden a good deal. Where do you go? I will not let anyone know where I go. It doesn't seem to have done you harm. And I'm glad to hear you eat so much more. Perhaps it is an unnatural appetite. Well, I don't think so. You're gaining flesh rapidly and your colour is better. Perhaps I'm bloated and feverish. Your pulse tells me that you are not feverish. And such flesh you have gained is healthy. Your father will be very happy to hear of this remarkable improvement. I won't have him told. It will only disappoint him if I get worse again. Oh, hush, my boy. He shall not be told without your permission. You are too sensitive. You must not undo the good which has been done. All right, nurse, I have seen enough. Any instructions for me, sir? No, his advance seems extraordinary, but he still excites himself very easily. And nothing must be said to irritate him. Very good, sir. They guess something. They're suspicious. I may be obliged to have a tantrum. You need not have a tantrum, but perhaps you ought to start complaining again. Yes, and I will try to eat less as well. But will you be able to now that you have an appetite? Would you have been able to send any of the breakfast away this morning? This morning I wish the slices of ham were thicker. I will try to send away some of the lunch. You may eat some of mine. Then you can send away some of yours and not be hungry. But we must get fat together, Mary. Well, then, we will ask Dickon. He will think of what we can do. It takes such a long time to get to our garden. Dickon pushed you very fast. There, the door is shut. I can get out. Dickon, you said you had something new to show us. Aye, I have. The carriage can stand behind the rose bush here. And see what else is behind it. A pail of rich milk with cream at the top of it. May I take the cloth off? Aye, that was only to keep the creatures out. 
and a batch of currant buns, fresh from the oven. They're still warm. Mother tucked them in tight so they'd keep the heat. She took them from the oven just before I left the cottage. Oh, these are excellent. Mm. Mm. We should be able to send away our dinner now. Mm. Some of it. <laughs> I've never drunk from a pail before. Mother said it'd take the edge off your hunger. Dickon, your mother has all your brothers and sisters to feed. She can't spare food for us as well. Mother'd never let anyone go hungry. If I send some of my pocket money, like I did for the seeds, would she buy things for us to eat? Aye, that she would, gladly. She'd buy taters and eggs, and us can go in the woods and make an oven of stones to roast them in. We shall need salt for the eggs. And butter for the taters, and, and heather honey for the currant buns. Could you bring fruit every day? Aye, to be sure. We'll have regular feasts in the woods. <sighs> now it is time for the chanting. I shan't sit down this time. I should always walk while I chant. Being alive is the magic. Being strong, strong is, is the, the magic. magic. The magic, the magic, is, magic in me. is in me. The magic is in me. Magic, magic, come and help. Being, Being alive, alive is the magic. Being, Being strong is the magic. The magic is in me. I'm sorry I've neglected the patient for the last week or so. I was called to London on business. How does he seem? Ian, she both. They're eating next to nothing. They both look well. Let me check your pulse, my boy. Oh, I'm more than to death of them. I'm sorry to hear that you do not eat anything. You ate so well a short while ago. I told you it was an unnatural appetite. Mary, what is the matter? It was something between a sneeze and a cough, and it got into my throat. Well, my boy, as long as going without food agrees with you, I suppose I need not disturb myself. That boy is a new creature. So is the girl. Ill-natured little thing she used to be, and now her and Master Colin laugh together like a... A pair of crazy young things. But perhaps they're growing fat on that. Let them laugh. <laughs> oh, I hope he didn't guess anything. Oh, I kept serious, but you snorted. I couldn't stop <laughs> I remembered the way your mouth stretched when you ate that big potato. <laughs> And then I had that thick crust with jam and clotted cream on it. <laughs> oh, the rain's grown everything. Weeds as well as flowers. Us will have to pull them before the roots get a firm hold in the earth. Dickon, is this a weed? Aye, I'm that one beside it. Why are you staring at me, Benny with the star? I was thinking as I'd warrant that's gone up three or four pound this week. That's the magic. And Mrs. Sowerby's buns and milk and things. And those, yes. Mary, Dickon, look at me. I'm well and I feel I want to shout out something joyful. I might sing doxology. What is that? They sing it in church. Mother says she believes skylights sing it when they get up in the morning. Sing it, Dickon. They must all stand up then. Uh. Praise God from whom all blessings flow Praise him all creatures here below Praise him above ye heavenly host Praise Father, Son and Holy Ghost Amen It is a very nice song. I want to sing it too. And you, Mary. Praise God from whom all blessings flow Praise Him all creatures here below <coughs> Praise, Praise Him above ye heavenly host, host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
I, I never seed no sense in doxology afore, but I may change my mind in time. Who is coming in here? It's Mother. That's who it is. I know I wanted to see her, and I told her where the door was hid. Ah, hey, Dickon. Here I am. I'm very glad to meet you. Hey, dear lad. Hey, dear lad. Are you surprised because I'm so well? Aye, and that's so like thy mother that made my heart jump. Susan Salby, look <laughs> at the lad's legs, will they? <laughs> they was like drumsticks his stockings two months ago, and I heard folk tell us they was bandy and knock need both at the same time. <laughs> look at them now. <laughs> hey, let him go on playing and working in the garden and eating hearty, and they'll not be a finer pair in Yorkshire. Good morning, Mr. Salby. And thee too. That grow near as hearty as our Elizabeth Ellen. I'll warrant that like thy mother too. Our Martha told me as Mrs. Medlock heard she were a pretty woman. She was, but I know that I am not. <laughs> that will be like a blush rose when thou grows up, my little lass. Bless thee. <laughs> Come and see Robin's nest, mother. The young Robins have flown now. We watch their parents teach them how. <laughs> I suppose learning them to fly is the same as learning children to walk. But I should be all in a worry if mine had wings instead of legs. <laughs> <laughs> do you believe in magic? That I do, lad. I never knowed it by that name, but thou wert singing to it when I come into the garden. I felt so joyful and I wanted to shout out something to anything that would listen. The magic listen when that sunk doxology. It would have listened to anything that sung. It was a joy that mattered. Hey, lad, what's names to the joy maker? Now, see here, I've baked dough cakes for all of thee. Do you mind sitting on the ground, Mrs. Savage? <laughs> Not me, lad. And is all this still secret? The garden coming alive and thy health and strength coming to thee? Mm. Yes, but it's getting difficult. Mary and I can't help laughing when we're together. And I don't sound ill at all. He doesn't look ill either. <laughs> Bless us all. I can see thou has a good bit of play acting to do. But thou won't have to keep it up much longer. Mr Craven will come home. Do you think he will? He mun come back, that he mun. I wish you were my mother, as well as Dickens. Hey, dear lad. Thy own mother's in this very garden. Do you really think so? She couldn't keep out of it. No, it's her garden. It always was. In the garden. In the garden. In the garden. Mr Craven, sir. Hmm? Mr. Craven, uh, here is a letter for you from England, sir. Oh. Uh, thank you, Pitcher. That was such a real, real dream. In the garden. The door is locked, the key is buried. I don't remember where. Um, thank you, Pitcher. You may go. Very good, sir. Dear sir, I am Susan Sowerby that made bold to speak to you once in the village. Please, sir, I would come home if I were you. If you will excuse me, sir, I think your lady would ask you to come if she were here. Your obedient servant, Susan Sowerby. I will go back to Misselthwaite. Yes, I'll go at once. Pitcher! Pitcher! You must pack for me. We leave today. I suppose you mustn't mind the rain because it's watering the garden. Yes. Mary, why are you staring at my mother's portrait? I was wondering why the curtain was drawn back. I'm going to keep it like that from now on. I'm glad. Now I'm better, it doesn't make me angry anymore to see her laughing. I think she must have been a magic person. You are so like her now that sometimes I think perhaps you're her ghost made into a boy. 
If I were her ghost, my father might grow fond of me, and then I should tell him about the magic. That might make him cheerful. Oh, Mary, my legs and arms are so full of magic that I can't keep them still. <laughs> Do you know how many rooms there are in this house? About a thousand, I suppose. There's about a hundred no one ever goes into. Suppose we go and look at them now. That's what I was thinking. Ring the bell. Someone must bring my chair. There are all sorts of rooms, and there are galleries where you could run. The magic would like that. Stop the chair. I'll walk now. I have never walked upstairs before. Oh, you can do it. I know you can. <laughs> oh, there's an Indian room where there's a cabinet full of ivory elephants. <laughs> I'm going to run from one end of this gallery to the other. Do you think I can run? Yes. I can show you a room where there's a family of mice who live in a rose-coloured cushion. I never knew I lived in such a big, queer old place. Wait. I'll race with you. One, two, three. <laughs> Welcome home, sir. Medlock, come to me in the library at once. Pitcher will see to the luggage. Yes, sir. In the garden. I will try to find the key. I will try to open the door. I must. I don't know how. And I don't know why. Sir. Medlock, how is Master Colin, Medlock? Well, sir, he's different in a manner of speaking. More peculiar. Yes, sir. He used to eat nothing, then suddenly he began to eat something enormous and then stopped again all at once. And does he eat now? No, sir. And you know he would never let himself be taken out of doors. Then, sir, suddenly, without warning, insisted on being taken out every day by Miss Mary and Susan Sarby's boy, Dickon. And if you'll credit it, sir, out of doors he will stay from morning till night. How does he look? Well, if he ate his food, sir, you'd think he'd be putting on flesh. But we're afraid it may be a sort of bloat. And, sir, he laughs in a very peculiar way sometimes. Dr Craven is coming to see you shortly. He never was so puzzled in his life. Hmm. And where is Master Colin now? In the garden, sir. In the garden? Medlock, I'll see Dr. Craven later. I'm going out. In the garden. I have to remember where the buried key lies. But I cannot. I cannot. Good afternoon, Weatherstaff. Yeah, I see. Here's the door. Still locked, but... Am I dreaming? It sounds as though children are inside the garden. Oh! Oh! Who are you? Sorry. Oh! Father! What? <laughs> Where have you gone? Oh! Be still. Father! I'm Colin! In the garden. Yes, it was the garden that did it. And Mary and Dickon and all the creatures and the magic. We kept it secret to tell you when you came. I can't believe it. Aren't you glad, Father? I'm going to live forever and ever. Take me into the garden, my boy. And tell me all about it. The roses... All the tumbling roses and the lilies. We planted the lilies so they should flower just at this season, but I, I didn't remember so many. I thought it would be dead, the beautiful garden. Mary thought so, at first, but it came alive. We have worked here since spring came. Dickon and Mary first, then me and Ben Weatherstaff. You said I could have any piece of earth I wanted. You said I couldn't do any harm. Harm? <laughs> it's a glory. Us didn't make it too tidy. Us just took away the weed and the dead wood as they was chalking the rest. And we planted seeds in the gaps and they all grew. Sit under the plum tree. This is our place where we talk. I have to tell you about the magic and Dickens creatures and the spring and the summer and about how I'm strong now. Yes, yes, tell me. 
Oh, Colin, I have been all wrong for ten years. What have I been thinking of? No, you must not think sad things. That is the wrong magic. Our magic is joyful magic. If you keep thinking about it and calling to it, it will come. Will it? I shall teach you, because I am a scientific discoverer of the magic. Oh, Mary, Dickon, Father, it need not be a secret any more. Thank you kindly, ma'am. I could sup another mug of that ale. Martha, fill it up. Did you see Mr Craven in the garden where the stuff? There you are. There you are. And Master Colin. And Miss Mary, too. Together? What was they saying to each other? Yeah, I didn't hear. Long of only being on stepladder looking over at wall. But I'll tell thee this. There's been things going on outside as you house people knows nowt about. Mm. Mm. Look out of this here window if there's curious. Look at what's coming across the grass. Mercy on us. It's the master. And young master coming, walking with him. Walking. And there's our Dickon and Miss Mary. Hey, it was a lucky day when that little lass came to live here. The sun is shining, the sun is shining. That is the magic. The flowers are growing, the roses are blooming. That is the magic. Being alive is the magic. Being joyful is the magic. The magic is in me, the magic is in us. <laughs> The Secret Garden, dramatised by Judy Allen, from the novel by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Mary Lennox, Jessica Marshall Gardner. Mrs Medlock, Beryl Reed. Ben Weatherstaff, Robin Bailey. Dickon, Ian Taylor. Colin, Guy Faulkner. Martha, Harriet Walter. Mr Craven, James Faulkner, Dr. Craven, James Green, Susan Sowerby, Natasha Pine, Nurse, Joan Walker, Mr. Pitcher, Brett Usher. Music was by Elizabeth Parker, and The Secret Garden was directed by John Taylor.